Hey, Bass Geek here. And today I'm gonna give you a master class in A-Rigs. All right, guys, we're gonna go over the basics, which I've got a couple of basics out there. This is gonna be for fall to spring, which is my favorite time to throw them. Really, which ones I throw, why I throw the ones I do, and in what situations. I'm not gonna be able to run around the whole lake and show you, but trust me on this, as you can see here. That gentleman right there, I have been on the struggle bus here the past few months. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Woo -hoo. Boy, that one's been eaten, boys and girls. That one's been eaten. Look at that. So like I said, most of you guys that watch my channel on the regular know I throw an A-Rig. I love to throw an A-Rig. It is one of the best search baits. Even if you can't use it during the, uh, during the tournament, it is a great bait to tell you where fish are and maybe how to catch them. So you can eliminate areas with it almost year round for me. The colder months of the year is when I start to throw it. Now, I'm gonna go through a couple of things that I've really never heard anybody else on YouTube or anywhere else really talk about when it comes to the A-Rig. And we're gonna start with the simplest, okay? Rod, reel, and line. Rod, reel, and line, guys, I've got two rods. Now, I've got the other one in there. Uh, they both, I believe, have uh this is a bb1 pro so i believe they both have bb1 pros and i have them both in six four to one now if you have trouble keeping an a-rig down you need to go with that mid fives okay so a five speed reel i throw it on 20 pound fluorocarbon I will go down to 15 pound. If you are just starting, throw it on monofilament. Throw it on 20 pound mono. You're gonna get a lot more stretch. And when you do get a backlash, you're not going to get, uh, you're not gonna break this very expensive bait off. Because by the time you put the heads, by the time you put the uh, uh, baits on, this is an expensive bait. It's 24, $25, give or take, you know, four or five bucks. Now, all that being said, like I said, I covered all this, so we're gonna go through this part of it really quickly. I've got two rods, this rod, which is a Lose Custom Speed Stick. It's a 7-Eleven, both rods are a 7-Eleven. The other rod is a Veritas, yeah, Veritas, I know. If you haven't seen that video, go watch, but it is the only one and they've stopped making it. So it is a stiffer rod is the reason I have it. This is a 7-Eleven heavy with a medium fast tip. So it's great for throwing some of the smaller A-Rigs, which is this one, as a matter of fact, and I like to use it for use this one for smallmouth. I, I like to use it for largemouth too, but I'll explain to you why this, which is a Shane's Bait Dominator, is my favorite uh, of all, okay? Now, 
let's talk about heads guys my go-to is an eighth ounce all the way around if i'm in tennessee and i can't use that eighth ounce all the way around and i can only put three hooks on i'm going to do one of two things i think it's picasso makes a one eighth dummy head so a hitchhiker head that is one eighth ounce and you can actually screw up uh, on there little baits if i can't do that I go to Walmart and I buy some of the Arky ball head jigs. I cut the hooks off and turn it up and I use that. If I don't have any of that, I put heavier heads. So I may put two one eighths and a quarter right here to kind of balance it out the way I want. I may put you know, two quarters and an eighth right here, depending on how deep and how much, I, how far I want it to fall. In the fall, guys, I fish, as you can see, some pretty steep areas. So you need to make sure that you are adjusting your Alabama rig weights per your area, your water, your conditions. You know, you may throw this on you know, one, one eighth, or you may go back and throw it on, you know, like a one sixteen. I do cast right up to the bank. This for me, I fish it almost, not all the time, but during the fall and, and all the way through to post spawn, I fish this in the same exact way you'll fish a spinnerbait. I'm going to look for a lot of you know, those windy areas, those lay downs, and I'm gonna follow those bass back into the coves and I'm gonna bring come back out. That's why I fish it a lot in fall and spring. Winter time, I kind of go away from it in the middle to the end of winter when it's really cold. But you get a few of those days where it's warming up, you can take this and catch you a few nice bass. Now, all that being said, what I said that was key here was the fact that I follow those fish back when they're feeding on shad and then back out, okay? That's the key. So whether that be fall or spring, spring when they move in, they're gonna be feeding the whole way. And then when they come out, they're gonna feed back up. Same with fall. That's when the A-Rig to me is at its best. Now, situations. There are situations when I'm going to throw, and you'll notice my, my go-to size of bait is a 3.3. So like a rib swim bait, whatever you like. And we'll talk about the differences in what I throw, even when it comes to the different swim baits and, and the action. So let's break down the components of the A-Rig for me and how I think about them. The very first thing I'm gonna think about is gonna be size and it's gonna be wire flexibility, okay? So, one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of Shane's is because a number one you can actually change this and that's a whole nother video we'll do you can actually order just the arm so if you break off an arm which with these because they are a more flexible arm will happen so if you buy one of these uh and again links to everything in the description i would highly suggest you buy a couple of extra sets of arms this is a umbrella and there are times that I throw no blades. We'll get to that. We're gonna go through each component. Now, Umbrella, the wire is nowhere near as flexible as this, okay? It's, it's close. And there's a lot of different ones out there that have heavier gauge wire. You're not going to get the, when you flex your reel or you snap your rod tip, out of the umbrella or the flash mob, which is, you know, basically these are my two favorites right here. You're not going to get the flex you're gonna get out of this. Now, this isn't gonna be able to handle some of your bigger baits. That's when I really move over to this or even 
some of the hog farmer umbrella rigs. They're pretty stout. The Picasso umbrella rigs are pretty good. And that's going to come with matching the hatch. But again, we'll talk about bait or lure that we're going to put on there later. That's also going to come with what size I use. These are your standard sizes right here. Now, I generally throw 90% of the time I am going to throw uh, an umbrella rig with with uh, blades on them. These are for those super sketchy, you know, if it's a little clear or, or dead slick calm and overcast like today, I may go with this depending on how much light, how much breeze we actually have. Uh, I may go with that for largemouth. A lot of times largemouth are a lot more finicky than smallmouth are and it's in clear water and, we, and we've even got a little bit of chop. That's when I'll go away from blades. Those times we've got the mini blades of glory. Now you can see this is a much smaller, much shorter blades. This is a very compact. Guys, this is great, great when they are in the fall, they are fishing. Or for you bank anglers, you guys that are just getting started with A-Rigs, this is where I would recommend you to start. This is a Shane's bait. Fifth element, very small, very compact. Again, you're going to fish it in the same place as you would, except around grass. They're not good around grass. Unless you can keep it up over the grass, this is going to be great to keep it over the wood. You're not going to bump it like you would a spinnerbait because you do have exposed hooks. And yes, you can fish belly-weighted hooks. I have done it a hundred times and it works great. So then you can bump. You're going to use smaller baits. Early fall, when they're chasing those little bitty shad, if you've got, you know, the thread fin like we've got in this lake, sometimes I will downscale to this. It will get you more bites, and it'll still get you big bites. It's a lot more finesse. We know that as we get into the fall, before, you know, the lakes start to drop or before the lake begins to turn over, that it gets a lot clearer, and this can be a great little bait during the early fall now if i'm fishing around largemouth early fall late summer really more you know i mean you got to be in the fall before you start throwing this early fall i'm going to use baits that are that don't have a lot of movement so i'm going to go away from the kitek style baits i'm going to go to the uh I think they're called the Easy Shiners by Kitek too. Uh, they're called the Mavericks by Bass Munitions. Those are what I'm going to use. They're a little more finesse. They're a little shorter, and they don't have quite a as wide of a tail wiggle. That's something to always be cognizant, cognitive of is how wide that tail wiggles. Uh, if I'm fishing for smallmouth and I'm predominantly targeting them or I'm in dirtier water, I'm throwing the swinging fats on there, the ribbed swim baits. I want all the action I can get, okay? Because it just pisses those fish off. Smallmouth and spots. But if I'm fishing predominantly, especially in times when largemouth are a little more reluctant, you know, they're maybe just starting to feed up, but they're just coming out of that, that kind of summer... Um, you know, heat, I'm going to throw something a lot with a lot less. Now, this this is still going to have some wire bend to it, but not as much as the full size either. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go with less movement. That's, the, that's sort of what I'm trying to get across to you is think about an A-Rig, not as I'm just going to grab any A-Rig and throw any A-Rig at any time. Think about the tools you have at your disposal. Each A-Rig can be made for more action or less action. So during the springtime, the closer I get to the spawn, when I know they're feeding up, and I know I'm chasing those smallmouth and even those largemouth, and it's windy, I want all the action I can get. As many blades as I can get, as you know, much tail swing as I can get, as much uh, wire flex as I can get early fall when it's still kind of tough and they're still kind of finicky 
we're going to start here okay now as we go into the fall we're going to move on up and that's where we move into this now again you'll notice the color of the baits most of the time i'm going to tell you to go white or very natural but again if you're targeting smallmouth even in clear water the electric blue sartreuse or the sour grape man it is hard 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 to beat uh like i said the 3.3 is my go-to on that small one uh the mini blades of glory uh or the finesse uh blades of glory i would definitely probably start out in the fall especially i would back down to the 2.8s um uh, don't know with that because i'd be fishing a lot shallow i'd pro shallower i'd probably back down and wait all the way across the board too so just one step down uh <clears throat> as we get into the full-on fall feed this is what i'm going to once they're really eating, once they're really munching, I'm pulling out the Dominator. It's got a ton of blades on it. It's got, you know, really great flex. And I can either go natural with wide or some sort of natural shad or ghost shad. Those are really the three colors that I throw uh, with, the, like I said, the sour grape here from Bass Munitions on the Recon. Or, <clears throat> or the... Uh, uh, electric blue sartreuse again I'm, I'm only throwing those two colors though 90 percent of the time if i'm around smallmouth when you're putting those baits up on those hooks you have got to make sure that you are are putting those up there so that they are straight because especially with the flex so when you make that cast with that alabama rig one of the things that I like to do is as soon as it hits the water, I'm lifting that rod tip and kind of pulling it forward just a little bit, and then I'll let it drop so that all the baits kind of flare out. They're going the right direction. It's not tumbling over itself, hooking baits, hooking each other. And with a, with a, uh, uh, like the Shane's bait, you're, you're going to foul up some baits a little more often. Make sure you're using the shortest hook possible because you're going to hook tails, you're gonna hook each other. So that's another big key. And if you don't put that hook in there exactly straight, what's gonna happen is, is that bait's gonna to wanna to body roll on you. And when it body rolls, whether it's hitting the water, whether a fish is swiping at it, or whether you're just retrieving, it's going to want to do something weird and foul you up. And that's a wasted cast. So, it takes a little bit to get used to this stuff, but like I said, you have to be cognitive of, you know, how you're casting it, how it's coming through the, the air, and then when it hits, I always stop right before it hits the water so I can give it that little bit of tug and make sure that it straightens itself up and then starts to drop, and my first retrieve is very, very slow. As far as heads go, my one of my favorite heads now i like a heavier wire head so i generally go with cumberland pro lore swim bait heads they have a finesse head if you're using the smaller a rig go with the finesse head it's a lighter wire hook don't heave them you know me i'm going to swing away and i'm going to get them in the boat to me i don't want to take a chance of losing the fish i want the fish in the boat Okay, so I'm going to use that heavier gauge wire, and I'm going to put a put a hook set on them, and then I'm going to crank, 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 boat hop. They're in the boat, all right? Lighter gauge when you're using smaller. Really lighter gauge when you're using the Shane's baits. The lighter gauge hooks is, are better, uh, especially for you getting started, because even if you get a hit, they're going to set the hook themselves. They're going to be a little more penetrating. It's kind of like, you know, the, using a light wire on a... Uh, drop shot you've always got to remember too as far as depth goes more blades bigger bait more rise so it's going to be harder to keep it down all right now i do want to backtrack a little bit and talk to you about line 15 pound line guys if you get an overcast day and it's slick like right now it's you know really overcast it's very dark actually um back off the 15 pound test don't be afraid of it and i know a lot of you are going to say <clears throat> oh i throw mine on braid oh they're, if they're going to eat that wire but here's what i want you to think about 
So it's not about the visibility, but it's about the sound that's coming off there. So if you throw that on braid in clear water, they're going to hear that. It's like playing telephone. You, str you string two cans together and you pull it tight. One person talks into one can and the other person can hear you. So as that line, which will go by the bass first, goes by, as it comes through your guide and it's going zzzz, that is being translated into the water where it travels farther and it goes right by the fish before the bait even gets there. Now, now dirty water, that may help them. It may draw them to you. But if you're in clear water, line size does matter. I can take you out and prove it to you a hundred times over. When do we upsize? Well, of course, when we're using bigger bait, when there's bigger bait. If there's gizzard shad, guys, I will go up and they're feeding on, you know, the really big shad. I will go all the way up and put me a five inch uh, bastrix on the back and maybe four of the uh, 3.8s, maybe four 4.3s or 4.8s on there. So when they're really feeding on big bait, that's when when I'm going to go to that. <clears throat> we, they tend, like I say, in the fall, they tend to feed on that smaller bait. So that's what I'm going to look for. If I'm fishing for a large mouth, I may go larger baits. If I'm fishing for small mouth and spots, I'm going to back that off in smaller baits. You know how it is. So that's when... You know, I'm going to really pick up that big bait A-rig. Now, the smaller baits are going to get you bit, but when you pick up that big bait A-rig, you're looking for a big bite. That's what you're throwing it for. As always, questions and comments in the comment section below, guys. If you haven't tried an A-rig, I'm telling you, you need to pick an A-rig up this fall, all the way through the winter, and especially coming into the spring. I know a lot of you miss the A-Rig in the fall, but I'm telling you, the A-Rig in the fall is the dealio. All right. Again, questions, comments in the comment section below. Guys, you know I love to talk about fishing with you, and I love to talk about an A-Rig. I will link up here somewhere, where whichever corner it flashes up in, so make sure you check it out. My original A-Rig uh, sort of how-to, so it kind of fills in some of the blanks for you guys that are just getting started in it. I think it's a really good uh, video. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And you guys, you guys rock. All right, guys and gals, we are going to pick the winner of last week's or this month's or whatever mystery tackle box it was at this point. You guys know I'm behind and I don't even know which box goes where. But anyway, you're going to win a box. So whoever it is, you're about to win a box. Here you can see the finesse jigs. We're going to copy the URL. Go into the random comment generator. We're going to paste it in. We're going to filter duplicates. Include replies. And we'll go with that. Now let's get them. Hundred and thirty-three. Seems like that's always the how many it is. And let's see who won. Robert Carr, you did I uh, close enough, Robert. Jiggy. I'll give it to you. Getting jiggy with it. Robert Carr, congratulations. Brother, you know the deal. Just contact me at my email. Send me an email and I will put a comment under your comment in that video letting you know how to get a hold of me. Send me your information at to bassgeek.biteme at gmail.com and I'll mail the box out to you. All right, again, Robert Carr, I appreciate you.